Hello there, Buzzkillers. It's the old professor here on a Thanksgiving week to talk about that famous American holiday and tradition and about the myths surrounding that holiday and its traditions. And I want to start, believe it or not, in 1849 with a woman named Sarah Josepha Buell Hale. By 1849, she was an enormously successful teacher, writer, and editor in Boston. She wrote dramatic novels and magazine articles and edited various important journals, especially the Ladies' Magazine, for almost all of her adult life. A pioneer in education for women, she also firmly believed in an ordered version of 19th century New England family values, stressing traditional gender roles and emphasis on family life. In 1849, she started writing to presidents, first Zachary Taylor, then Millard Fillmore, then Franklin Pierce, then James Buchanan, asking that a day of, quote, Thanksgiving be established as a national holiday. As far as we know, her letters were ignored by those presidents. But in 1863, she wrote to President Abraham Lincoln, asking, quote, to have the day of our annual Thanksgiving made a national and fixed union festival, end quote. And she asked for the day to be fixed as the last Thursday in November. Now, wait a minute, Professor. Why 1863? Hasn't Thanksgiving been a national holiday in late November since the Pilgrims in the 1600s? Well, yes and no. Embedded in that wishy-washy answer lies a lot of subtleties and complications that make the history of Thanksgiving more interesting than the standard story we hear. And, as is almost always the case when we talk about things on this show, the history of Thanksgiving is an example of something that illuminates far more than the specific thing itself. Now, what about the first Thanksgiving and the dating of the holiday? When and where was the first American Thanksgiving observance and feast? And who was there? The traditional story is that the pilgrims at Plymouth, Massachusetts were so grateful for their survival in the New World and for a bountiful harvest that they organized a day of thanksgiving prayer and feasting in 1621. The pilgrims were so thankful for their new lives that they invited local Native Americans to join the feast, and it was a joyous event of cross-cultural understanding and friendship. But immediately, buzzkillers, we've got problems. Not only does the Plymouth story rest on shaky evidential grounds, plenty of other places in colonial North America have claims to the first Thanksgiving observance. These include... St. Augustine, Florida in 1565, San Elizario, Texas in 1598, and the Berkeley Plantation on the James River in both 1607 and 1690, depending on who you talk to. Quote, days of Thanksgiving, end quote, however, had been observed in Europe for centuries before this. Sometimes, usually when an important and unexpected good event happened, clerics would announce a day of Thanksgiving, where extra masses were held and Thanksgiving prayers were said, literally, quote, giving thanks, end quote, for surviving a terrible storm, winning a war, or something of that magnitude. So the idea of Thanksgiving observances is a very old one. And I'm pretty certain similar traditions and Thanksgivings were held in other places around the world since way back. Now, but since the story of the Pilgrims at Plymouth is the dominant one and the one that Americans think they've based their traditions on, let's go with that one for the time being. No mere one-day feast, the Pilgrims partied for three days after this particularly good harvest in 1621. It's pretty clear, however, that this was a harvest celebration, not a Thanksgiving observance. In other words, the pilgrims weren't thanking God for some special big act. They were mainly chowing down on their abundance. Harvest dinners, by the way, were a century-old tradition. Even in modern-day England, some people hold a harvest dinner or a harvest supper every year in the autumn. The accounts that survive from 1621 tell us that roughly 50 pilgrims and 90 Native Americans celebrated this 1621 harvest dinner. There's no direct evidence that the pilgrims invited the Native Americans to the dinner, but since Guanto and other natives had helped the pilgrims enormously during the early years as a settlement, it's likely that when the Native Americans came to the dinner, they were welcome. Venison was the main dish and the only one that is mentioned in the available sources. They may have had turkey because that was not uncommon at the time, but it was not as frequently consumed as deer meat. In 1623, the pilgrims had another Thanksgiving feast. There was a drought that year, which finally broke with a 14-day rain. The subsequent harvest was abundant, and the pilgrims had reason to have a harvest dinner 
and also to make it a day of thanksgiving because they were delivered from the drought. Now, as we move into the 18th century, days of thanksgiving were proclaimed, usually by presidents, but sometimes by major clergymen, fairly regularly in those early days of U.S. history. These thanksgiving observations were usually for a specific event, such as the end of the War of 1812, and only sometimes for a general period of good fortune. Thanksgiving, therefore, was not a regularly scheduled holiday and was not necessarily observed every year, and the dates often varied from state to state. Then came the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln usually gets the credit for creating a National Day of Thanksgiving. This started with an 1863 proclamation that Sarah Hale had requested, prompted by Union successes in the war, especially the Battle of Gettysburg. But if that's not a myth, it's certainly an oversimplification. The combination of Hale's ideas and Lincoln's desire and need to give the country an emotional lift during the Civil War spurred Lincoln's 1863 Thanksgiving proclamation. It declared that the holiday was to be celebrated on the final Thursday of November each year. Annual observances started in 1863 and have continued since then, but it was not an official national holiday. In fact, official national holidays really didn't exist back then in concept or in practice. It continued to be an unofficial holiday in late November, observed on different dates. Then President Ulysses S. Grant signed a Holidays Act in 1870 that made Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Day, and July 4th as federal holidays. This is important, but the act only applied to Washington, D.C. itself. And as you might imagine, southern states did not embrace the tradition and would have certainly derided a Lincoln idea and then a Grant directive even long after the war was over. Thanksgiving practices remained diverse for, you know, 60-ish years. People ate duck, geese, chicken, and sometimes turkey. Sometimes games and sports were played and sometimes parades were held. Now fast forward to 1939 and to another president who was given credit for modern Thanksgiving. In 1939, with the Depression still raging, President Roosevelt decreed that Thanksgiving was to be observed on the next to last Thursday of November each year. He did this to jumpstart the Christmas shopping season and boost holiday sales. Thanksgiving by this time had marked the start of the Christmas shopping season for most people. There was considerable opposition to this, however, from some Republicans who thought it was wrong to mess with the tradition that Lincoln, one of their party's founders, had established. They called FDR's move Franksgiving after Franklin D. Roosevelt, get it, and, quote, Democratic Thanksgiving. And they held a Republican Thanksgiving on November 30th of that year, the last Thursday of the month. Congress finally stepped in and passed a joint resolution saying that starting in 1942, Thanksgiving would be observed on the fourth Thursday of November every year, no matter how many Thursdays were in any particular November in any particular year. That stuck. So although the 1621 Pilgrim story is what we think about, it took a lot of other people and events to bring about modern Thanksgiving. Sarah Josepha Buell Hale, the Civil War, Abe Lincoln, the Depression, FDR, and the Congress itself. And when you throw in traditional football games, which are added later, the Macy's Day Parade, which was added later, and the presidential turkey pardoning, which is very, very recent, it means there have been a lot of cooks creating Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoy Thanksgiving. The thing I look forward to every Thanksgiving is sitting at the kids' table. Fewer political fights and more food fights. Talk to you next week.